Alright, so welcome back. I hope everyone had a really nice spring break. And last week we just kind of took it easy. I appreciate everyone's feedback with, um, you know, with what you thought of those video lessons. But it's time to get back into actually working. So what I wanted to do today is going to be a little bit different than what I've done in, in other lessons. Uh, I actually posted a review guide uh, for a test I would have given on Section 5.4 and 5.5. I think that that'll be a good way for us to kind of get back into the swing of things with um, pre-calc honors or honors pre-calc. Uh, so before we add left, I'll just kind of go over a few things that uh, you should know. And uh, the formula sheet for this stuff is posted. Let me just double check here. Uh, yep, so it's posted. You should be uh, taking a look at that formula sheet. And your homework today is going to be to work on the review for 5.4 and 5.5. So just as a little bit of a review, whenever we're dealing with uh, angles that aren't special angles, so special angles, and today is 427. Special angles I'm talking about were like uh, 30 degrees, 45, 60, 90, uh, well, actually, 30, 45, and 60. I mean, those were our special triangles. But every once in a while, we had to come up using a sum and difference identity by adding these to 90. So 90 plus 30 is 120. 90 plus 45 is 135. 60 plus 90 is 150. 90 plus 90 is 180. And then we could even keep going by adding all these angles to 180. So like 210 and so on. So that's how we handled uh, some problems using the sum and difference identities. And the formulas are posted. Uh, but this is just kind of like a big review. Remember for our triangles we have 1, 2, and root 3. The other triangle was 1, 1, and root 2. And then for our quadrantal angles, we said that sine of theta was the y value, cosine of theta was the x value, and tangent of a quadrantal was sine over cosine. So in order to do some of these problems on your sheet, you're going to have to know uh, three different things. All right, the three different formulas you're going to need to know. First are the sum and difference. And I have these on your formula sheet, but just quickly I'll write them down now. So the sine of A uh, plus B, if it's a sum or a difference, we'll do the sums first, uh, is going to be the sine of the first, cosine of the second, same sine, and then cosine of the first, sine of the second. If it was sine of a first angle minus the second, you would use the same sign. For the cosine of a sum, you would use the sine of the first, sine of the second, opposite sign, and then cosine of the first. Oh, uh, you know what? I, I'm only really getting a little rusty too. <laughs> For cosine, it's always the cosine of the first, cosine of the second, uh, and then the opposite sign, and then sine of the first, sine of the second. I knew something didn't look right. Uh, if it was a difference, so a subtraction sign there, you would use the opposite sign there. And for tangents of a sum, it would be tangent of the first plus tangent of the second divided by 1. And then this bottom one's always the opposite sign. All right, and then if this was a difference, we would change this, and the top's always the same, the bottom's always the opposite. 
So some indifference would happen, like say if you had 75 degrees. All right, 75 degrees, you could use first angle is 30 and 45. And then you could use one of the formulas. Second kind of formula you'll need to know are your double angle formulas, and I showed you where these came from. Some of the videos also showed you where the double angle formulas came from. And we have the sine of a double angle was just 2 times the sine of x cosine of x. For the cosine of a double angle, we could uh, um, use three different formulas. One would be cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. Another formula we could use using a Pythagorean identity for substitution, 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. And the third formula we could use is 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. And then for the tangent of a double angle, we could use 2 times the tangent of x over 1 minus tangent squared of x. And then the last formula we're going to talk about is uh, the half angle identities, or are the half angle identities. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine when people don't use correct grammar. Uh, so for the half angle identities, we had sine of a half angle would be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus the cosine of x divided by 2. So for example, if I asked you what's the sine of 30 degrees, in the formula I would use 60 divided by 2 and 60 would go for there also. When you're trying to figure out plus or minus, you want to look at what you're originally given. Like if I asked you sine of 30, 30 is in quadrant 1. And remember, all students take calculus. So the way you figure out whether it's plus or minus for this or any other kind of problem uh, is you look at what you're taking the trig function of. What quadrant is that in? And that's going to determine if your answer is going to be pos uh, positive or negative. For the cosine of a half angle, it's going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of x divided by 2. And then for the tangent of x over 2, that's equal to plus or minus 1 minus the cosine of x over 1 plus the cosine of x. Uh, or we could use the formula 1 minus the cosine of x over sine of x. Or we could use sine of x over 1 plus the cosine of x. All right, so that's a little bit of a review of what you need to know to do your review. There's also a couple questions on there where you're solving trig equations. Uh, you should be fine with that, uh, and I will go over that tomorrow. All right, have a nice day. Talk to you soon.